in this video, I'm going to show you how my back handspring went from this to this in just 30 days. The reason I learned to back handspring is because I wanted to learn to backflip. Simply because my little brother can do one and has been able to do one for over a year now. And I was tired of him axing. Can King you do a backflip? Backflip. So one day I went to the trampoline park with him to test if I could. And well, this is how it went. So seeing how far I was from doing a backflip or even just jumping straight back on a trampoline, I knew I was nowhere close to hitting a backflip on the ground. So to get used to flipping straight back, I decided to start learning the next best thing, a back handspring. But before hopping straight into a back handspring, there are some progressions that I got down first, which I recommend you getting down as well before attempting. The first thing I recommend learning is a basic handstand and be able to snap down from a handstand into a standing position by like flexing your core down. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now I have a background in calisthenics, so I can already hold a handstand for almost 30 seconds, which is a pretty long time. And your handstand does not need to be anywhere near that. Literally, I've never seen my little brother hold a handstand for longer than six seconds and he can do flips better than I can. A handstand is just to get you used to your body being upside down and snapping down, as well as just like, feeling that core control and if you look at a back handspring you're doing a handstand in the middle of a back handspring so obviously you should be able to do a handstand and snap up the next progression is to learn a front handspring if you can get your body into a handstand i'm very confident that you can do a front handspring the way i learned how to do a front handspring is doing a handstand then accidentally falling forward now this might hurt but literally just get into a handstand then fall forward and don't hit your head then i just continued swinging myself kicking that leg into it and running into it and using more momentum until i flipped up onto my feet and did a front handspring and then you add a little pop 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 off your hands the next progression is to learn the makaku. Now before you learn this, you're going to want to find your twist side. And that is just a side that your body naturally wants to turn to if you're about to do a flip. A way to find this is just by jumping and spinning and seeing which side your body naturally spins to. Or just jump and spin, don't even think about it. For me, I twist to my left. I like throwing my right arm and my right leg over to the left side of my body. But my brother, Penel, and little sister all twist to their right. And we're all right handed, so I don't think it really based on that it's really just whatever you feel comfortable with. when i first started practicing the makaku i didn't know my twist side and that it was such an important factor with your comfort in a flip so since my brother twists his right he could do a makaku going over his right and i couldn't do a makaku going over my right so i honestly thought this was why i couldn't backflip and i spent months practicing a right-handed makaku just to find out he can't do a makaku on his left so knowing your twist side can literally save you months of training. To do a makaku, start by getting into a deep squat, then kicking your leg, which for me would be your right over your twisting side, which is over to my left. So I'd kick my right leg over, aim for your shoulder, and kick it to my left shoulder. Also, the hand placement is really important. See how I'm putting my hands out to the side? That's to make sure that you don't like hyperextend anything and that your arm moves smoothly through the range of motion. So put your hand out to the side like that, and then you kick over your twisting side. To you, that might be putting your right hand down and kicking your left leg. For me, it's putting my left hand down and then kicking my right leg. After you get that, you wanna gradually add more power and more kick until you're almost jumping into it and you should feel yourself getting gradually straighter and straighter. And you can even kick to your shoulder less and start kicking straight back. And if you do it, it'll look something like this. Also, make sure that you're jumping more and more with two feet because I had a problem that my left leg would take off after my right because I twist to my left. And that habit was really hard to break and really hindered the speed at which I got my back handspring. Like, there were so many failed attempts just because I was looking to my left and leaving my left leg lingering. So just get into the habit at jumping off of both feet at the same time early. You can still kick to a certain side. As you start getting more and more comfortable with it, try and jump off of both feet at the same time. That'll help you greatly with your back handspring. 
after you get really comfortable with the makaku like you don't want to rush into this step but you should feel pretty comfortable with it pretty quick it's not that hard of a move once you get comfortable with it start jumping a little more straight and back and then follow through with that second hand so you should throw that second hand as you're throwing your kick and your body will almost guide through that second hand and at this point it should start to look like a sideways back handspring like you're almost there make sure you're jumping off at two feet and you're almost there Once you can do a sideways back handspring, jumping off at two feet pretty consistently, I would say start focusing on looking straight forward and then straight back as you jump off of your two feet and swing your arms and literally you should just do a back handspring and this should feel pretty similar to the sideways back handspring. You just go a little straighter, so look straight and then look straight back. Your head's gonna want to turn, but you have to mentally control where you're looking because hey, where you better, look, your like, body will follow. Here's me doing Look, this is what you're doing. With, like, I'm going, like, I'm going over, but I'm trailing out to the side. Mm -hmm. The reason is, you're looking this way. Uh. Turn, because you're doing. Look, look at my head. Your body's gonna go where you look. Compared to, I'll even look at my foot. So just look forward. Look forward. It should be like forward. And then straight back. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now you can still do this from a deep squat just so you're not playing with crazy high forces as you're learning to flip over yourself. But as you get more comfortable with flipping straight back, I would switch to doing a more standing explosive position because this will transfer better to the back flip. So yeah, that's how I learned how to do a back handspring in 30 days. How to hit a backflip in 7 days coming soon. If you enjoyed the content, subscribe. And if you want to be part of a like-minded community of people improving themselves or even just to get tips on your flips that rhymed, join the Self-Improvement Summer Discord. I'm telling you, it's literally going to help your improvement skyrocket. You'll be in a group chat with a bunch of people who are focused on self-improvement. It's, it's, it's really good. We're really all dialed in there. If you want to help support the channel, I have a Patreon where you can become a member and get exclusive content and even get videos like this early for just two bucks a month. Subscribe and I'll get off YouTube. Go hit your back handspring, bro, and join the Discord and send me a video of you doing it so I can congratulate you.